Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. I have the usual package from China, which says PCB board. I've opened the end to make it a bit quicker, but I'm not sure what it is as per usual. Something I ordered months ago, no doubt, and it's just turned up. Let's have a closer look on the unbagging. Mm, nice little sealed bag. Get out, you pesky critter. <gasps> shock horror shock horror can you tell what it is yet it is a boost converter hooray now the reason i ordered this if you recall and i'm, I'm going to zoom out hooray i'm very excited because it allows me to continue a project and it's this project if this lot is still functioning let's get it all out of here yes that's my raspberry pi PCB gadget thing and if you recall the problem I had was the panel requires 12 volts it's a 12 volt panel and although the data side works fine the backlight didn't work because it was uh, not receiving enough juice and that's that's the bottom line but now technically with this I can achieve more juice because this should be taking a 5 volts in and outputting a slightly well a very very much higher voltage by uh, adjusting this pot and then there's a, a little boost chip and its inductor. So without further ado, let's get on and, and sort of test this really. So I'm gonna unplug the Pi. We don't really need the Pinus right now. Yes, your Pinus. We just need our charge doctor. Yes, here doctor. And a USB wire. And we can just plug it right in. Let's plug it in. I did turn on my soldering iron. You might have just heard that in the background. This is cute too. Look, it's actually got the USB power as a voltage in and you can just solder terminals too. So that's gonna be great for this project because I can just sort of solder it to the power that goes to the Raspberry Pi and uh, not have to waste a whole USB connector. So here's my voltmeter, voltmeter. And you can just about see that in the corner of the frame. So we're fitting everything in today. We're zooming, keeping it zoomed out, keeping it real. Uh, 18 volts yeah great so you can see here just about if you squint I'll tell you 5 volts out 0 amps of course and then that's giving me an 18 volts an 18 volt output of the uh, end of this module so I'm it's not got any load though so what I'm going to do is try to find a suitable screwdriver and that will do I'm going to adjust this down until I get 12 volts uh, nope, going up. That's 19 volts. Other way. Go the other way. Anti-clockwise. There we go. You can see it dropping down. 16.2, 15. Now this module, if I recall, is quite expensive. I think it was probably a couple of quid. But not too much. Something around that region. So there's our... Uh, 12 volts-ish. Think I'll just leave it a hair over 12.1 that should be fine so here is our panel and you can see this is the weird one with the sort of red and black cables but if you look at underneath it's 12 two 12 volts and two ground volts 12 these are 12 so I'm going to put this on the V out plus I'm just going to hold it with my fingers and you can see the panel just here on the edge of the frame V out minus anything ah oh, i think it's <laughs> i think our actual battery back's gone off there we are our battery bank rather not back went off oh i don't know what's happening there do you see how that just sort of died instantly I'll try one more time that's odd that's extremely odd. So you can see this sort of current meter's died. Let's just check this. It's saying it's got full power. Why does it hate that so much? Why? I'm wondering if it's just, I don't know, maybe it just draws too much current. So I'm going to have to hook this up to the bench power supply. I think I'm, I'm going to try the uh, V in and V out tabs on this with a bench power supply. 
So I've got the bench power supply just off camera and I'm going to adjust the bench power supply down to 5 volts thereabouts. So we're going to go to the V in here. Nicely done. V in minus again. Again nicely done even if I do say so myself. And uh, going to take our output plus here. I've got our out minus, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold these by hand. In fact, I'm just gonna touch it with the soldering iron. It happens to be just here again. I've turned it on already. So that gives me one tag. I'm just keeping the other tag loose so I can you know attach it if I want to. So the power supply is now on. Our black probe fell off. Not to worry. Okay, let's go for it. There we go. I'm seeing. Oh, I'm getting a current limit here at 700 milliamps. So we're using 591 milliamps in this conversion here. So I don't know, I don't think it's going to work out for us. The panel's definitely coming on though, nice and bright. And with some dexterous use of my multimeter, I'm going to try to read the voltage that's coming out of this bad boy. Get in there. It looks like we're driving it at 9 volts. We're getting 9 volts from our 5 volts. I'm just going to turn the bench power supply up. Yeah. So now we're at the bench power supply itself is outputting uh, 9.3 volts. Again, 431 milliamps. Putting that down to 5 volts, it's using 750 milliamps. So it's uh, it's eating a lot there. So 750 milliamps through this whole setup through this, right? Let's just hook up the screen then directly to the power supply and see how many milliamps it uses. So currently the screen, the power supply is set to 5 volts, so the screen probably won't come on or it won't be happy about it. So it'll just come on and be dim. Come on, there we go. To be honest with you, it doesn't look particularly dim though compared to uh, that sort of 12 volt feed. So I'm just turning up the voltage now. We're at 11 volts, 12 volts. So we're at 12 volts now. 12 volts it's using 300 milliamps. And then back down to five, it's using 533. So I don't know where I'm going with this. I have to decide what's my uh, plan of attack here, really. There is something quite interesting to discover, though. You see the driver, the cold cathode driver to the screen. It's it's at minus. It's at nine volts, basically. Yeah, I'll show you the I'll show you the difference if I get the probes on. It's at nine volts, and then if we turn our power supply up to twelve volts. You can see it's only moving a sort of fraction of a volt. So maybe it makes more sense to put our booster just in line with the actual panel LED uh, driver for the white LEDs. And then that way, you know, we've sort of we're just we're just boosting the bit that needed the boosting, assuming the rest of here is sort of low voltage and happy enough as it is. So the quest goes on in the uh, Raspberry Pi build, but I'm sure I'll uh, come to some sort of decision at some point, maybe by the next video, and then we'll just continue with it. But that aside, I do think this is a rather nice module, and uh, I would advise you to get one into your sort of your own teardown lab or electronics lab, just because you never know when you're going to need one of these. And uh, just try to read the chip off for you. This is, a, by the way, SKU seven 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 board, and the chip, oh the chip is pretty much illegible. 
Yeah. I'm going to have to say, looking at it. Nope, can't read it. So if I find out what this chip is, I'll leave it in the description down below. But just look for the modules that look the same like this on eBay. Just put Boost Converter Board. As ever, thank you for watching.